the remnants of what was easily the most exciting and important and monumental game I've ever played. Hey everybody, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. This episode is really special for me. As many of you know, I have been developing my own game. It's called Idols of Torment. It's a passion project birthed from a creative block and one simple piece of terrain. It's kind of taken over my life. My partner JP and I have basically finished all the rules. We've playtested quite a bit, but this last playtest was really special. This game is set in a world called The Echo, which is the remnants of heaven and hell which collapsed in on themselves. Now each player controls eight idols. And the idols you choose to control belong to one of eight unique orders, which are all uniquely themed in ways to inspire you to make cool models. This game is miniature agnostic. You'll be able to use whatever miniatures you want and really go wild making them cool. But there's something that makes Idols of Torment a little bit special and different from your average skirmish game. You see, two players don't simply sit down and battle it out. The reason these idols exist is to reap the souls of the humans who still return to this destroyed plane of existence as if they were going to heaven or hell because they serve ancient primordial beings and they need to harvest the energy from these souls and take it back to the cosmic realm. These souls are called the lost and they're represented in game by actual models that are controlled through an AI system in the rules. Up until this point, we've used these ghouls from I think WizKids to represent the Lost, but we always knew that the final game would have actual Lost minis. Because this is the part of the game where the miniatures are not agnostic. We set out to make official Lost miniatures that players can print at home and even better get on a plastic sprue to assemble themselves, like a real legitimate game. We're making our own models. <laughs> it's, I cannot express how exciting that is and how daunting it was when we first thought about doing it. The reason this session, this game was so exciting is that it was the first play test we did with our official lost miniatures. These are the first ever printed prototypes. We spent a lot of time and effort contemplating how we wanted these characters to be represented. We didn't want them to look too ghoulish and zombie-ish. They were humans. We wanted them to be basic human souls, but all in a state of agony or confusion or just generally being lost and wandering this horrible place. And this is where my friends at Crippled God Foundry come in. I tasked them with the mission. When they sent me the first render, I was blown away. It was exactly what we wanted. I was so happy. They did the supports for me as well and I was able to print them out. Oh my God, they came out so damn nice. And the models were exactly what we wanted. I printed them on my Sonic Mini 8K using 8K resin, and I cannot say enough good things about this printer. I'll put a link in the description where you can pick up Frozen products. They've also been kind enough to do a limited promo for my viewers and give you a little bit of a discount. At this point, I have only printed the minis and put them on bases, and I did this like two hours before we played this game. And now it's time for me to start thinking about paint. I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little intimidated because these are so important to me. I'm only at the priming stage and I'm already kind of stuck and having reservations about how I should approach this. Nowadays, basically every time I paint a miniature, I zenithal prime it using white ink, you know? Hit it with some white ink from the top to create natural lighting. Normally, your light source would come from above, since the sun is usually above you. But in this world, it's a pretty dark place. Whatever light there is would be from candles that would be on the ground and within the terrain. So I'm sort of tempted to highlight it from below, like this rather than like this. But on the tabletop, 
looking down, I'm not sure how great it will look. I normally don't worry this much, but these are just so important to me. I can print and paint an infinite amount of them, so I might as well try this. Now that these have been primed and highlighted, they're even nicer looking than I realized. I am so happy with this. I could just about cry. <laughs> John, Nick, you guys did an amazing job and I'm so happy I tasked you with this mission and that you accepted. I will be forever grateful. I didn't choose Crippled God to sculpt these for me by accident. I chose them because they're awesome. They've been sculpting miniatures for a lot longer than many of their competitors. With years of experience creating physical resin miniatures, they now offer a monthly Patreon subscription where you can get fantastic models to print yourself at home. The pre-supported models are really focused on fantasy RPG players with loads of great characters and monsters. Every month has a unique theme. This month's theme is Ancient Spirit of Evil, which is fully loaded with mummies, undead, and a ton of wonderful Egyptian-inspired scatter terrain. Not only are there the minis, but there's also modules, lore, objects, and battle mats, even paper minis for those of you that don't have a 3D printer. When you join up, you get a great welcome pack with extra free models as well. I could tell you how much I like their work, but I think the fact that I chose them to create the original models for my own game for something so important to me should speak for itself. I'll put a link in the description so you can check them out and join up. Now, I'm not actually sure if highlighting these from underneath was the best way to go. They definitely look really cool when viewing them from a lower angle. I'm not sure how dramatic they'll be viewed from the top during a game, but I'm gonna run with it. I'm tempted to do a little bit of a bluish green, possibly a little bit of a highlight with a yellow to represent the candlelight. I normally don't dilute inks, but I think I will in this case, simply so that it's not quite so strong of a color. I don't know, this might be a bad idea. Hmm. You know, I'm really not sure. All right, let's see how it looks with some yellow highlights from below. Is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. Well, let's run with it. They are definitely looking kind of cool. I just don't know if they're looking how I want. I'm really not sure that this has ended up where I want it, but I'm gonna let this dry and then reassess. This effect of being lit from underneath looks neat when you are like this, but <laughs> that's not usually how you view a game. You're looking like this. I think they do need to be top lit also, I'm not in love with the colors, too saturated. Let's try something different. All right, these are looking a lot more appropriate. They're not uh, totally lost on the battlefield and the colors aren't so jarring. I'm really happy with how these are going. Next time around, 
I can do it a lot more quickly, removing a lot of steps. This is so exciting. Like now, no, like now, honestly, they're actually yeah? like now perfect. Okay. Now, like, it's like I never imagined that they would be that good. I didn't think they would actually have that much emotion in them. And it's they're amazing. It's so dark in the echo, like most of the time, right? Yeah. And so I just imagine these figures walking around, like shadowy figures with just these like little glowing eyes. Glowing eyes, you know, like it, it could be somebody from 2022 that when they die, they come back and they, they look go like to this that. place and they're, yeah. they're exactly. I think that the severity of the tattered robes kind of just represents how long they've been there. So mm -hmm. in my mind, somebody. A fresh that, one would have cleaner robes. Exactly, fresh robes. And then yeah. somebody whose robes are all torn up, like they've been wandering around for 2,000 years. You know? mm -hmm. I love that they blend in with the landscape, that they're... It looks like yeah. I just like want to look at them for a few more you minutes. Want, do you want to like revise some stuff? To, like, what do we want to do? Do we want to try to play? It's hard to convey just how big of a deal these minis are for me. They represent a huge accomplishment and progression for me as a creator. When I started this channel, I never thought that one day I'd be working on publishing my own game. And I certainly didn't imagine that eventually people would be playing that game with minis made by the channel. This is a dream come true. We're planning to launch the Kickstarter for this game later in the year. If you want to get some more information and get updates, visit idolsoftorment.com and sign up for our mailer. Thanks again to Crippled God for working with us on this. You guys nailed it and I will be forever grateful. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, a comment, and a share. I, I can't wait for the next step in development of this game, and I can't wait to bring you along for the ride. Cheers, and thanks for watching.